times the price of a regular vet visit. All right. <clears throat> it's good to be in church again, and everyone's here. I probably ought to start off with, uh, is it, it's hot in here to me. Is it y'all? It's hot in here, yeah. Uh, I guess the air conditioners are down. I oh, working, but for some reason it I'm pulling down real good for some reason. Anyway, um, uh, I wanted to mention, I'm sure everyone read on the Facebook that Brother Shelby passed away yesterday, Brother Shelby Weaver. And um, the doctor said his heart just gave out. Said he, of course, he went into the hospital <clears throat> probably over a month ago with yeah, I think he kind of had the flu at first. He did not have co coronavirus at that time, and, he, and it turned into pneumonia, and they had him on ventilator, if I remember right. But he got off of it and got better, and so they sent him home, and after he got home, he had a relapse and got worse. They took him back to the hospital, and, and uh, this time he tested positive. I don't know if he got it while he was in the hospital or how he got it, but anyway, he had... Uh, you know, he's always fighting this cancer situation that he he's had, and then he had pneumonia on top of that, and then got corona on top of that, and he just he just couldn't pull out of it. So we certainly want to pray for his family and <clears throat> it's mainly his children. Uh, I was fortunate enough to talk to him a couple weeks ago on the phone. And I just uh, sort of talked him through getting his heart right. And, you know, I said, Brother Shelby, if, you know, we're praying and praying and trying to have faith for you that God will spare you and help you come up out of this. But if anything did happen that you didn't come out of it, you need to make sure your heart in fact, he had said something to Brother Ron Johnson, that Brother Johnson talked to me about it, and that's what made me feel I should call him and work with him about that. And so I went over, you know, helping him get his heart ready to, uh, to clear everything between him and God and, and try to get, <clears throat> get him in a condition that, and, you know, I know he received me on it, and so I was thankful that, we were able to accomplish that before, you know, he he got worse, wound up on a ventilator, and and then of course passed away. Also, brother John Bud called me when I walked in the church door this morning, <clears throat> and uh, his his associate or assistant pastor, which is brother Dennis White. Uh, really, brother White's really the pastor, brother. Brother, Brother Bud is the senior pastor, but Brother White, I mean, everybody knows he will take over the church. Anyway, his wife, <coughs> Sister Pam, has tested positive for corona. And then their daughter and son-in-law. Let me, let me think just a minute about that. Yeah, I think it's their... <laughs> Sister Pam and and Brother Tubby's wife, Sister Rhonda, are sisters, and it's her daughter Emily, Sister Emily, and her husband Jake, which is what would that be a nephew and, and niece uh, to Sister Pam? They're both sick. They haven't been got a result on their test yet, but they're sick, and then. Uh, one of Brother Bud's granddaughters, which is also Brother Bud's daughter, is married to Brother White's son. So their granddaughter has is sick in bed. And then, see, Jake and Emily are sick in bed. I mean, Jake, yeah. Oh. Uh, he told me somebody else, but then also Brother Bud is sick with a fever and real severe headache. 
And so he called me and asked me if we'd have prayer for them. They've closed their church today. They've got enough people with symptoms and sicknesses. And so uh, maybe we'll just stop right here and pray for Brother Shelby and the Nacogdoches Church and Brother Bud. Precious Lord, oh God, Lord, I know you know these needs. Brother Shelby's family, Lord, comfort them and help them help during this time. Oh, God, we pray. Brother Johnson, help him, Lord. I know they were great friends, and his wife, Beth, needs your prayer. Then Brother Bud, oh, God, touch that church in Nacogdoches, Sister Pam and Brother Jake and Emily, their little granddaughter, those that are sick there, Lord, Help them, oh God. You are our great physician and our help in the time of need, the Bible says. Our trust and our our shelter, God, we know is, is you. Oh God, we give you praise today, Lord. In Christ's name, amen, amen. All right. Um, I thought I might say something to you today um, on uh, the fifth chapter, uh, the first First Peter, the fifth chapter. I think that's where I'm wanting to go. I think. I wanted to say something to you about, uh, <clears throat> is it the 17th verse? I'm not sure. The one that's talking about your adversary, the devil, who goeth about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may desire. Is it the 8th verse? Let me see if I... Yes. Matter of fact, let me highlight that right quick. Um, <clears throat> let's read that again. Verse First uh, Peter five and eight says, "Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil." As a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. It's not talking about men that are in the world, but the brethren, your brethren. They're, they're, they're uh, having the same afflictions to deal with. <clears throat> So I thought we ought to look at the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about a roaring lion. I don't know about you, but I've read that scripture. As a matter of fact, I remember <clears throat> many, many years ago, I, I would say it's been close to 40 years ago, maybe 38 or so. I... Uh, I don't remember where I was going, but I flew into Memphis, Tennessee and spent the, and went to church with Brother Eckleberry and spent the night with Brother and Sister Eckleberry. And of course, I don't know how many of you know, Brother Eckleberry had a little different twist on the devil subject, but he did believe in the devil as a personal being. <clears throat> so he, he, I remember he used this scripture on me that night. We discussed the subject and... Uh, he, he mentioned this scripture, uh, also the scripture in Ephesians that says, give no place uh, to the devil. Uh, somebody find that scripture for me. How does that say that? Uh, uh, I believe it's in here. I can, I can probably help you. all I'll look with you all and see. Four twenty-seven. 
uh, it says, uh, verse 26 says, Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole still no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Uh, so, uh, I remembered those scriptures. But anyway, I just wanted to, I, if, you, if you do a search on a roaring lion in the Bible, you'll find, oh, half a dozen scriptures. I've got three or four of them here that I, I want to mention to you. Um, in Psalms 22, and this scripture is talking about uh, it's talking about uh, when Jesus was on the cross. It's a, it's a prophetical scripture when he was on the cross. Verse 13, Psalms 22, 13 says, They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. So he's talking about people there, calling them, you know, uh, that they were like as they as a ravening and roaring lion. Then uh, in Proverbs, uh, Proverbs. Uh, Twenty-eight, fifteen. Uh, let's see where I want to start. start up here at uh, the ninth verse. It says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be, an, be abomination. Who causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit, but the upright shall have good things in possession. The rich man is wise in his own conceit, but the poor that hath understanding searcheth him out. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Happy is the man that feareth always, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. As a roaring lion and a raging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the four people. So, <clears throat> when you read these scriptures, you begin to realize that what Peter was talking about was uh, the... Uh, the leaders in Rome that were giving over to the leaders of Judaism that was against Christ. And of course, even the people, you know, they, they, uh, they were very puffed up and very taunting at him while he was hanging on the cross. He, he said, how did he say that? That uh, they, what they do to him? They gaped on him as a roaring lion. You know, well, you have to know that Peter knew these roaring lion scriptures in the Bible. I mean, this man was a scriptorian, and he knew those scriptures, and he knew how, why he likened what was going on at the persecution that was on the church, and he likened it as to the, what the rest of the scriptures is talking about when it talked about a roaring lion. Uh, now, in... In uh, Isaiah 5, let's see if I can go up here. Let 
Jesus is talking here, here the Lord's talking he's, he's having Isaiah prophesy uh, to Israel uh, I want to read just a little bit on this Let's start um, in the 20th verse. It says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble and the flame consume, consumeth the chaff, so their roots shall be as rottenness and their blossoms shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he has stretched forth his hand against them, and hath smitten them. And the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And he'll lift up an ensign to the nations from afar. That's a flag. And, and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth, and behold, the, they shall come with speed swiftly. None shall be weary or stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep, neither shall their girdle, the, the, the girdle of their loins be loosed, nor the latches of the shoes be broken. Notice he said uh, he would hiss on them from the end of the earth. That's talking about the end of the Gentile Jewish world. When Jesus came, he, you know, Isaiah was a prophet of, of the Messiah, of Christ. Uh, then it says, <clears throat> None shall slumber nor sleep, neither shall the gird, girdle of their loins be loosed, nor the latchet of their shoes be broken, whose arrows are sharp and an and all their bows bent, their horse hooves shall be counted like flint, and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their roaring shall be like a lion. They shall roar like young lions. They shall roar and lay hold of the prey and carry it away safe, and none shall deliver it. And in that day they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea. And if one look upon the land, behold darkness and sorrow. And the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. Then one more scripture I'll give you here in Ezekiel 22. Uh, I mean, Starting the nineteenth verse, I want to I want you to know that this is talking about Israel, Jerusalem. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, because you are a are are all become dross, behold, therefore I will gather you in the midst of Jerusalem. And they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow fire upon it, to melt it, so will I gather you in my anger. In my fury, and I'll leave you there and melt you. Yeah, I'll gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and you shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall you be melted in the midst thereof. And you shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. And the word of the Lord came upon me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed nor rained upon in the day of indignation. 
There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof like a roaring lion, ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They've taken the treasure and precious things and have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and clean. And they have hid their eyes from my Sabbath. And I am profane among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves, ravening the prey to shed blood, and destroy souls, to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar. You know, tempered mortar is something that's, that's tested, that will hold, uh, you know, it will hold uh, cement or blocks together, but untempered mortar will not. And that, that's just a picture of falsehood that won't hold up, you know, it's not the truth. Seeing vanity and divining lies unto them saith, Thus saith the Lord when the Lord hath spoken. So, I just wanted to give you those scriptures on, on what the Bible has to say about a roaring lion. You can look up, there's, there's two or three more scriptures on it. There's a couple in Proverbs, a couple more. Uh, there's a couple more in Isaiah, but uh, every one of them are basically saying exactly what I've shown you here. And the Bible, what the Bible has to say about a roaring lion is, is wickedness and civil power and religious power. That's why Brother McGowan and I were talking a little while ago. <clears throat> I'm fairly convinced that the wickedness of the media of America and the, I'll just go ahead and say it, the Democratic Party is so liberal that I think they have conspired to rise up against Donald Trump, the president, in such a way to get him out of office in November. They, and they're not going to let up. Just like this coronavirus, we, in, in the state of Arkansas, we have... Uh, we have 56,000 deaths since it all started. In, huh? That were sick. Yeah, I'm sorry. 56,000 that got it, that we know of. And there's 6,000 that have died. Just a, just a little over 1%. 600, I'm sorry. Yeah, 600 that have died. Just a little over 1% which is about what the regular flu, the rate of regular flu has caused in death. Now, I do know it's a, it is a weird, seem like to me a weird virus because some people get it and they just get over it. Uh, you know, uh, y'all met Sister uh, hmm, what's Jill's name? Joy, uh, what's Jill's sister's name? Jenny, Sister Jenny. That was Sister Pat Arthur's daughters, Jenny and, and Jill, which they were in the Republic Church, but they didn't make the move here. And Jenny kind of was in and out. She is a uh, nurse practitioner, and uh, her whole family got it, and they got it from their church. Several people in their church got it, but... They didn't do anything. I don't. Th they didn't do anything. But you don't do the regular flu. You know. They didn't. I don't even know if they took anything. They were a little bit sick. You know. But it wasn't a big deal. They all got over it just fine. But some people get this, and I mean, it 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 takes their life. There's some people gets it, and it affects some people differently, for whatever reason. I don't guess they've come up with a understanding as to why. However, there's people that gets the regular flu and gets sick and winds up in the hospital and die with it. You don't hear about that because the media doesn't blow that up like they're blowing this up. Yeah, I don't have the, the, the uh, 
rates or facts on that, but I've heard that, that there's more people dying of the regular flu. I guess it, it's continually going on, so I don't know what the flu rate is for the same time frame that people got this, but, but I do know that in some states it's worse. It's 2 to 3% in some states. Uh, I don't know if you looked at New York, how many people they've had. I think they've had nearly a half a million people get it. And I don't remember how many people they've had die with it. It seemed like 70-something thousand. I mean, yeah. But I don't, rem I don't know how. I don't know the, st the statistics on it. Uh, but anyway, I do believe that we definitely have the devil going about seeking whom he may devour as a roaring lion today. And I'm going to prophesy to you, this country is going to socialism. I hope to God that, that, that we get another four years under President Trump. And the reason for that, that the people that's running against him are evil. That's just all there is to it. Them people are no more godly than nothing, and they have no fear for the church. They're for everything, homosexuality and everything that's liberal. And at least, I don't think President Trump is a saint by far. I mean, just, I'll just tell you that. <laughs> but he does have a fear of God, and he is, he is for the Christian people and holding up the values of Ameri Christ America's Christian values. And so, you know, I'm, I felt like when he got put in it, God gave us a little extra time. And, uh, but uh, I just... I'm, I'm telling you, Saints, I'm, I'm just sick at what's happening to our, our country. That the people in this country... The first five are CNBC, CNN, NPR, <laughs> Samsung News, and Audio Burst. Which what? capsule would you like... This, that's Alexa. She thinks she knows more than I do. <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, anyway... Uh, I am fearful about what's happening to our country, and I, I believe it goes right along with the Bible that this country will go socialistic, which, you know, if you've really studied socialism, it's just a step before, uh, before dictatorship or communism. And uh, it's just more government, government, government. And that's what we've got today in this country. We've got a very handful, minority group of rich, wealthy liberals that are running this country. And people like, you know, they like for the government to take care of them. So they like, you know, all the things it's promised them. I can just tell you, in the Dominican Republic, they have, uh, they call it democracy. But they don't have democracy. They've got a tremendous, gigantic government. And all it is is the rich and the poor. And they, they, they keep the people just, you know, happy for just a little improvement. You know, we're going to give you a little bit better roads. Or we're going to give you this or whatever. But they got all the money and the people, they keep them poor. And everybody in that country is poor. There is no middle class. They're just the rich and the poor. And it's pitiful. I mean, many of them don't have jobs. And so it's, it's, a, it's a sad situation. And I hate to be a prophet of doom to you, but, you know, you, know, you can't. You, it's, it's the truth. We're living in a time when we're, I think, the mercy and grace of God is running short for this country. I think God will, I think he will make up his bride, the bulk of it right here in the United States of America and reach out to these other countries. But, uh, in fact, that, here, here, let's, here's some of the things that's got to take place before the end of this Gentile world. And number one, we, we have to have a restored church. All of these things are going to coincide pretty close together. Two-horned beast in Revelation 13 is going, to, is going to make the mark of the beast. 
set up the image of the beast. That's got to take place. It's prophecy. Uh, which I say is the United States of America that will do that. And it will... Uh, somebody give me that scripture in Revelations where I believe it's in the... Is it in the 17th chapter, I believe, where it says that it'll continue for a short space. Uh, the seventeen uh, ten, okay. Let me let me just let me start in the eighth verse there, Revelation seventeen and eight. It says the beast that thou sawest was this is Rome, and is not. It Rome went out of power, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. That's already happened. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they beheld the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains. That's Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and, and the United States on which the woman sitteth, that's religion, and there are seven kings, five are fallen, five is Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Greece, and one is, and the other is not yet come, that's America, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. America won't be a dragon power that takes rule over the whole world for a long time. It'll be a short-lived space. Democracy is a, is a unique design of government that God put it in the minds of our forefathers to develop. He did it for the purpose of restoring his church. Freedom of religion, this nation... Uh, was developed by men that 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 designed a government that that was they they incorporated freedom of church and state to allow the church and allow God to work in the church however he wanted and the government not to interfere with it however the government is interfering with it today but God set that up <clears throat> but the democratic a democratic government is a short-lived government, and here's why. It's got way too many loopholes in it. You think that our forefathers ever had in mind what's going on today to take, you know, they're continuing, they're going to take your weapons away from you before it's over with. You can mark that down. They're not going to let up on that until they accomplish it. They are, they are going to <clears throat> control Everything It's going to be bigger and bigger and bigger government. Uh, they, won't, they, they won't ever change the Constitution to say that there's no separation of church and state, but they will redefine it, and they will control churches. You know, churches will be, and in fact, they've been doing it during this, this pandemic. Some churches have been not allowed to have church. Our governor is obeying the Constitution. He's saying, what I'm telling you all about going to church and, sta and space, uh, social distancing and mask, mask and all that, he's saying, that's guidelines. I don't have the power to tell a church what they can and cannot do. There's a separation of church and state. He's made that clear publicly on television more than once. And so... <clears throat> He, he is a God-fearing man. He holds, he's holding to the Constitution. But there's other governors that have shut churches down. And they, they fine them or whatever if they don't obey them. They, it ain't a guideline to them. It's, it's, it's an absolute law. And so all our, our forefathers never had all this stuff in, the, in, uh, in their minds when they wrote the, wrote the Constitution, but there's too many loopholes in it. You can make it say whatever you want it to say, uh, 
you know, they're, 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 they're going to regulate everything. The government's going to regulate everything before it's over with. They're going to, they're going to make an image to the beast. And uh, the world is going to come into unity. And what they're going to do is all these, all these organizations are going to join up with the Catholic Church. And they're going to say that's the healing of the body. They're going to say the body's been divided and separated. And now it's all coming together. And they're going to call it the healing of the body of Christ. They're going to call that the body, and they're going to call us little cults, what they're going to call us. We're going to suffer persecution because they're going to be just like a roaring lion going about seeking whom they may devour. And their preachers are going to be prophets that says God said thus and so when he didn't say nothing. And so <clears throat> that's coming in the future. I don't know how, how you know, quick, it's going to take place, and and uh, so you know I do feel that it's a it's it's a time that children, our children are going to be living in a very dire time. You know there was a time when the Apostle Paul, <clears throat> in uh, he said in First Corinthians. Um, give me that scripture where he said, those of you that are married, I believe it's in the seventh chapter. Uh, <clears throat> I want the scripture where he says, uh, where it says, be as those that are married be as though you're not. Yeah, there you go. That's the one I wanted. And verse 29, 1 Corinthians 7, Paul says, But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. What he's meaning by that is, is that there's, you know, in... When time came so short and persecution was so great and God was getting ready to, to judge that, uh, the Jewish world Another and cut it off. Matthew 24, 19, it tells them woe. Matthew 24, uh, 19. 19 said, Woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Yeah. So he's, 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 sh he's saying... There's a woe to people that have little babies, little children. And the reason he was saying that was he went on to say, you're going to flee to the mountains. You know, when, this, when God begins to judge Jerusalem, you're going to have to flee to the mountains. And if you've got little kids, it's going to slow you up. And it's going to be hard for you to flee with a bunch of little kids. Now, I'm, I know everybody's you know, probably listening to me with, disdain right now, but I'm not talking about right this moment, but I am talking about the future. And I will tell you, I do feel for our young children, because they are going to grow up and live in a very dire time. And so, you know, but here was a time that he was, you know what he was saying? Those that are married be as though you're, ha you're not. He was saying, don't have no more kids. It's too, the time is too short for that. They fled to the mountains. You know what they did? They ate their own children. They drank their own urine and ate their own dung because the Romans ran them into the mountains and they starved literally to death and they died of thirst and starvation and their kids died and they ate them to try to stay alive themselves. That's how dire the persecution was in the end of that world. 
Oh, I know that. I know that sounds horrible, but it's it's the history. It's truth. There's nothing, un, you know. <laughs> and and I know, you know. I mean, we we we've been so spoiled in America. You just feel like nothing could happen to us. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It's already happening to us. This world has changed, and it never will be the same again. I just. It just makes me sick of what's taking place in the world. But I can just tell you, God's getting ready. Judgment is going to come. There were talked about a roaring lion. It also talked about the sea roaring. And the 98th chapter of Psalms talks about that day of the Lord coming. It said, let the sea roar. In other words, you're going to make this world mad with righteousness. They're going to be irate and they are going to persecute I believe I heard this when I first came to the body over 40 years ago, and it wasn't near as real as it is today. But you know what they told us? They said the day will come that men in this body that are preachers and pastors will go to jail, and some of them will be sentenced to death because they'll be accused of hate crimes and all other kind of things to coming against the government. I didn't think too much about that back then. I mean, it sounded okay because everybody was all right. You know, you can swallow stuff when, you know, you, you know, you just hear it and it's no evidence of it happening, but then when it starts happening, it ain't as easy to swallow and digest. Anyway, so, uh, and I promise you I'm not going to dwell on this for very many services, especially in a row, because I, I want y'all to still, still <laughs> rejoice and enjoy the good salvation of the Lord, because it's still here. But there are telltale marks that, and signs that are taking place. And so I just thought I'd make mention here this morning. I, I really, you know, somebody kind of stirred my mind up on, on uh, by the way, I'll, since Brother Durham brought up the 24th chapter of the book of Matthew, I, I probably need to teach on that before long because I teach the entire 24th chapter of Matthew was fulfilled in the end of the Jewish world. Where many men teach that parts of it was fulfilled back there, parts of it points down here. I do believe there will be a, a similar, similar things happen because we're going to go through a similar end of the world. But I think everything you read in the 24th chapter took place back there and was fulfilled back there, and I can explain it the way I see it anyway. Anyhow, everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. He, he's a good God, and there's still great salvation, and America's still a great country, even though it's not as great as it used to be. So I love our children, and I hope that I hope ours can live, you know, I hope our time frame lets them live out to a point that they don't have to suffer any of these things that we're reading or, or that's being prophesied. But I know we're getting close in time. We've got to consider it. We need to know that it is coming. All right, God bless your hearts. I'll see you upstairs.